Good morning. I'm Dr. Marcella Winmuller Campioni, an assistant professor in civil culture at the University of Minnesota. This video is produced in collaboration with Dr. Eli Sagor and the Sustainable Forest Education Cooperative. Today we're going to be covering concepts related to stand dynamics. Our goals for today are to review concepts and definitions of stand dynamics, the stand, and disturbance. Additionally, we'll talk about the stages of stand development proposed by Oliver and Larson. Those stages, those four stages, are commonly used in many forest types, including those in the lake states. Stand dynamics. Stand dynamics is the study of changes in forest stand structure with time, including stand behavior during and after disturbances. So stand dynamics is kind of what we think about in silviculture and applied forest ecology. But let's kind of break this down and look at some of these other terms that's within this definition of stand dynamics. So disturbance. Disturbance is a really important term and um, I like both of these. So we have Prickett and White which is how one of the classic definitions of disturbance as well as the definition from the Dictionary of Forestry. I'm not going to read these definitions to you but one thing I do want to highlight is this relatively discrete event and you see that in both Prickett and White in the Dictionary of Forestry. Any relative the discrete event that disrupts the stand structure and or changes resource availability or the physical environment. So we're talking about a change and a discrete event. So that is a really key thing. So those of you who may be taking a class either with SFEC or myself, that discrete event that is a key component of when we think about how we define a disturbance. So both in this in the disturbance uh, definition and in the stand dynamics definition, we have this idea of a stand. So let's review slightly, a little bit on how we define a stand. So a stand is a spatially continuous group of trees and associated vegetation having similar structures and growing under similar soil and climate conditions. So I think this is really important that we review this definition of a similar a continuous group of trees and associated vegetation with similar structure and similar soil and climate conditions. So there's a lot of ways we can kind of think about how a def how what a stand is, but it's really important we kind of define how what we are looking at when we think about a stand. So that then moves us into stand structure. So what are some aspects of stand structure? So take a moment, pause, write some things down. As we unpause, um, let's see if some of our shared um, interests are coming out or shared ideas are coming out. So I have it. So some aspects of stand structure, it's the physical and temporal distribution of trees and other plants in the stand. So we can, it can be described by species. It can be described by vertical and horizontal spatial patterns, plant ages. So we can think about this as the species and structural composition of a stand. So what does that stand look like? And in silviculture, we want to use quantitative numbers. So we want to use numbers when we're thinking about stand structure, whether it's a diameter distribution, whether it's percent composition, whether it's the age distribution. There's lots of ways we can quantify stand structure. Now let's move into the stages of stand development. Again, we're going to be using Oliver and Larson's uh, four stages of stand development. At the end, I'll also show some other models which look at other stages of stand that are, have different ways of looking at stand development. Four stages Oliver and Larson propose are stand initiation, stem exclusion, understory reinitiation, and this multi-age or old growth community. So stand initiation. So this is after a disturbance, again, a relatively discrete event, new individuals and species continue to appear for several years. So in this example, we look at a stand replacing disturbance. This can be um, a natural disturbance, such as a fire. This can be uh, a treatment, a silvicultural treatment, like a clear cut. Um, and in this case, it is. It is a fully replacing um, disturbance. And we have new individuals continuing to appear. An important part of stand initiation is that these individuals 
are free to grow. So they are not limited by growing space. There is excess growing space. They are free to grow. They have all the ability. So if you've been watching these other lectures on growing space, you know growing space is basically the key to everything when we think about silviculture. It's what we're thinking about manipulating. In stand initiation, they have they are not limited by growing space. That begins to change when we move into the stem exclusion stage. So after several years, we see no new individuals appearing and some of the existing ones dying. And we see that growing space is max, growing space is, is no longer available. We see, especially when existing ones die. So they're dying due to comp, to a lack of growing space. There's only so much growing space. Um, and those trees that are, whether they're first to appear, um, whether they're on a better site or micro environment, whether they have superior genetics, those are the ones that are able to maximize, to use that growing space with other individuals not being able to efficiently use that growing space and dying. We then move into the understory reinitiation phase. So death has occurred, there's been a change, there's again the availability of this growing space and we see uh, forest floor herbs and shrubs and advanced regeneration appear and we see a, a new kind of development of the understory. We see a shift in maybe the age class and um, again, a change in the structure and composition. So we're seeing greater structural diversity here. And then finally, this old growth or multi-age community, um, we see, depending on the definitions, we see um, some of the definitions say um, this is when all of those individuals from that original cohort have died. Um, others describe this more as this increase in change um, in composition and structure with the development of coarse woody debris, snags, and very variable um, structure and composition within the stand. So this is just one model. Um, Oliver and Larson's model is just one model when we think about stages of stand development. There are other models that we can talk about more, especially if you're in one of the classes, um, when we think about these stages of stand development, which might fit different forest systems better. Uh, Franklin um, and colleagues is one that goes out a lot longer to 1,200 years. So we don't have many forests in the Lake States that really um, are that old um, compared to maybe uh, the West Coast. So there are, there are additional models. So each forest type, each system um, is slightly different. And Oliver and Larson does a good job of capturing growth and development in certain forest systems. It doesn't capture all the types of development in the lake states, but it cap captures a lot of that developmental trend um, in the lake states. So we can discuss other models more, um, but I do want to kind of make sure that I'm not uh, I'm not saying Oliver and Larson is the only model, but there's lots of different models about stand development. So, when we think about stand development, stand dynamics, we see changes. We see changes in the forest floor, we see changes in the soil environment, temperature, available growing space. We're seeing changing in how the stand develops, and that's not just in the vegetation, um, but it's in the whole forest community. So to kind of sum up, again, we talked about stand dynamics, how stands develop through time. This is not a linear process. We, um, Oliver and Larson has four stages of stand development, stand initiation, stem exclusion, understory reinitiation, and the old growth phase.